Okay. So let me ask you something. What would you do if you had the ability to know what you needed, but you couldn't tell anyone? What if your parents would do anything in the world to help you, but they couldn't? They would probably feel helpless. They might ask family members for advice. They might go on the internet looking for answers. Eventually, they'd see their pediatrician about these behaviors. And eventually, they would, go, they would be led to a specialist where they would be able to get a diagnosis and be told of what their treatment options were. With access to effective treatment, a ton of consistency, and the love and support of their family, an incredible transformation can take place. That's the same boy. Let me take you back in time. I always wanted to help improve the lives of children with autism. So in 2001, I started taking courses to become a medical doctor. Now, in my first semester of college, I was offered the opportunity to work in an early intervention autism center. This center used the methods of applied behavior analysis, or ABA, to treat children with autism. Now, I had no clue what ABA was. And honestly, I was really apprehensive about getting involved in any kind of fluffy therapy that, trained, that claimed to treat kids with autism. After all, I was a scientist. So what you may not know is that people on the autism spectrum have a range of deficits as well as strengths. 25% of kids with autism will not learn how to talk. I worked with one boy that had pretty significant deficits that were made a lot worse by multiple seizures throughout the day. 20 to 30 percent of people with autism will experience seizures. Because of his seizures, he had a hard time remembering the things that we taught him. The team would work for months on basic things like selecting a picture to communicate his needs or turning on the water to wash his hands. And even though we had specialized training, there were a lot of really frustrating moments, um, like when we couldn't understand what he needed or what was upsetting him, or if he was experiencing a seizure at that moment. Although the progress was a lot slower, the moments of breakthrough were overwhelmingly joyous. After days of prompting and trying and practicing, sometimes you would get just one second where he would look you straight in the eye and he would smile the biggest smile and you would realize in that moment how connected you were, that you were in this together. He changed my world. This is what I wanted to do with my life. So I spent the next eight years working and volunteering with individuals with autism uh, in the U.S. And to make a long story short, I was hired by a wonderful Kuwaiti family to come and work with their child with autism. Because regardless of where you are in the world, every child with autism deserves the same level of support from their community and their family. I feel very, very privileged to be able to offer this support to many more children since we opened the first ABA center in Kuwait in 2009. So here's something that I'd like you to think about. Do you think a child with autism can function without having to rely on others for their basic needs? Do you think a child with autism can be in a typical classroom with other kids? Do you think a person with autism can grow up to go to university, get married, have a family, and live a relatively normal life? Currently, there's no cure for autism, but there is hope. And it starts by identifying the, the needs of the person.
One in 68 children will be diagnosed with autism, and it's five times more common in boys than in girls. A lot of children might start to show signs of autism within the first few months of life, although most will either stop gaining skills or will lose skills by 24 months of age. You might start to see things like a lack of eye contact or responding to other people at nine months. And at 12 months, you would start to see some language deficits, like no words or babbling. If you notice the signs of autism, you need to see a doctor. Decades of research show that early and effective intervention makes a significant impact on the life of a child with autism. Dr. Ivar Lovas was the first to study the effects of early intervention ABA therapy on children with <coughs> autism. In his 1987 study, he showed that almost half of the children that received ABA therapy became indistinguishable from their typically developing peers. And 90% showed substantial improvement. Now, as you can imagine, this was really controversial because nobody believed that those results were possible. So many other researchers looked into the effects of early intervention ABA therapy. And study after study shows that significant gains can be made if they receive quality behavioral intervention at an early age. In fact, lifelong care can be reduced by as much as two-thirds when they receive an early diagnosis and intervention. So what does this mean? It means we must challenge our limiting beliefs. It's time to destigmatize this diagnosis regardless of what it's called, of what we label it, these are individuals. Individuals that have a variety of behavioral excesses and deficits, behaviors that need intervention, that can be improved to a point that the person can be successful in their life. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it's, a little, it's not cooperating with me so much. So it starts by determining what are those needs. We use a comprehensive skill assessment to, to show us any behaviors that are limiting the individual. One of the primary deficits for a person with, with autism is communication. How would you tell someone what you needed or wanted if you had no words? I need help with my, 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 <laughs> These kids use other ways to communicate their needs. Aggression, self-injury, property destruction, but when we teach them alternative ways to communicate, they don't have to use those problem behaviors anymore. So to teach them communication, we will either teach them words or other methods to communicate their needs. Those methods serve as replacements for the problem behaviors that they were using before. So on this graph, you can see that as they are able to increase, how their requesting is increasing, their aggression is decreasing. And we can do this with many other skills, um, from language to social interaction to self-help to motor skills. We can teach them component skills that will improve their overall ability to engage in much more complex tasks. How do we do this? It starts by assessing every individual deficit as well as any interfering behavior. Then we create an individualized intervention plan to target those behaviors. We use charts like this to determine whether our interventions are actually effective. And depending on the level of the learner, we teach skills in a stepwise fashion until they're mastered. And we can do this with a number of different skills. Simultaneously, we'll implement a behavior plan to replace or reduce any problem behaviors that we see. So as a person starts to acquire these skills, we work on generalizing those skills so that what you start to see is a person that can actually function in their environment. OK, come on. 
Come on, Eddie. Where? To the house. Okay. Come on. Wait, come on. Doesn't that blow your mind? <laughs> it's incredible that the diligence of the therapist, the family, and the kids can result in a transformation like this. This is possible for many, many children when they're offered a structured, objective, evidence-based therapy provided by qualified professionals. We must challenge these misconceptions, get involved, and make a collaborative effort. As Dave Meslin said, a heroic effort is a collective effort. We need to work with our government to create standards to ensure that families actually have access to this therapy. Schools need to be involved in supporting the needs of these kids. A positive impact can be made in a society that will facilitate exchange, communication, and expansion by working collectively. Each one of us has something to contribute to ensure that these children reach their full potential. That might be getting married, having children, or going to university. This is a picture of Nora the day that she graduated high school. Nora was diagnosed with autism at age three. With early intervention that was intensive and consistent, she is now fulfilling her potential. She is actually um, attending university now and she's about to earn her associates in arts degree. Um, she just performed in her first college production, and I have to tell you, this girl has a set of pipes on her. And for those of you that that doesn't translate, it means that she sings really, really well. <laughs> we all have gifts. Each one of us has something to contribute to make this world a better place. With evidence-based intervention and a, collect and a collective effort, we can unlock the boxes of these unique minds. What will we find? <laughs>